serotonin, which is a molecule that everybody has heard of, but I feel like a lot of what we've heard about it is so narrow and selective, and we can actually learn a lot more a lot more about it from looking at its analogs in the wild world. And interestingly, serotonin is a very, very old molecule produced by many bacteria present in many plants as well as many animals. And um, one plant that is particularly rich in either bioidentical serotonin or a close precursor, according depending on which sources you read, is eastern skunk cabbage. Um, and so serotonin, I think of as the molecule, a molecule of making connections. Serotonin is very close in its uh, physical structure to psilocybin in the fungal realm and to the hormone oxen in um, the plant realm, which is a plant rooting hormone. And here again, I have to. That's A U X I N, I believe. Yeah. Yes. Right. And here again, I have to uh, credit Stephen Buner for making so many of these connections about the distribution and function of these similar alkaloids in uh, the ecological world. And so if you give serotonin to a plant or a fungus, it will use it like psilocybin or oxen. If you give psilocybin to a human, the human will use it like serotonin. Um, humans don't seem to respond to oxen quite so easily as far as I know. But um, what uh, these molecules have in common is their contribution to branching to creating new branches and new connections in nonlinear ways in the networks of information transmission that these organisms have. So if we look at psilocybin, uh, its ecology is really interesting because um, it grows um, in commonly, especially in pastures, and this is especially associated with cattle um, around the world. Um, and um, it, the, the psilocybin, for the psilocybin mushrooms, promotes more branching and growth of their mycelial network, but simultaneously the grasses that are synergistic with it or symbiotic with it, rather, end up having their roots grow longer and deeper as a result of the psilocybin they're taking, which they're using as though it were oxen. And so um, in the process, the grass gets physically deeper, but also more intertwined into a kind of collective mind of the meadow created by, among other things, the relationship between the grassroots and uh, the psilocybin mycelium, creating a new kind of awareness and consciousness, which can allow them to together adapt to changes uh, and unexpected changes in a more intelligent way. So, well, support your uh, range fed uh, cattle then. <laughs> right, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Visit us at the Matthew Wood Institute of Herbalism.com.